not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Beloved, here we are on YouTube in a unique place. God has appointed us at this time in our life. By his grace and his faith, we have at our fingertips a world of lost. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, we go out into this great ministry and make contact for the glory of God and Jesus Christ, our Savior. Tens of thousands of channels are before us, the homes of people from all persuasions and cultures, all religions and New Age organizations, and all individuals who have their own particular belief that excludes Jesus as Lord or no belief at all. Here we are at the Times Square and crossroads of the entire cyber world. The question is, what has God ordained us to do, and are we doing it? Remember the Lord commanded we go out into the world and preach the gospel of grace. He instructed us that some would be given ministries different than others, that each of us has gifts for our service through the Holy Spirit we receive when we first believe. We are commanded to be filled with the Spirit daily for service and in the gifts that God gives us, serve the Lord. For us to be effective in his service, we must be free of sin. Daily confession of sin is great wisdom, and commanding, and the blood of Jesus in heaven cleans us and restores lost fellowship with our Father, which occurs when we sin. What is not of faith is sin, beloved, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Free of sin, we pray to our Father for fillings of the Holy Spirit, to do according to God's will for us. And in this position of spiritual strength, we will know our particular gifts from God, and in their exercise, experience their growth. Revival starts on our knees, in humble contrition and confession to our Father in Jesus' name, and we are blessed in renewed fellowship, in power, and in love. Could we be at the doorstep of the day of the Lord and distress of nations with perplexity, nations unable to resolve their problems by themselves without God? Scripture speaks of the commencing of this with a great white horse rider in Revelation, bringing to the world a false peace and proclaimed by multitudes as the Christ man. I think we're at that point. And what of the true church now? Wherever we are, how will we fare in these times we are facing? Times like none of us have ever seen in our life. We look for the coming of our Lord. In him we occupy till he comes. In him we minister in our homes. In him the sun rises and the sun sets. In him there is prosperity and hope. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We who fear God in love, and the sureness of his justice will abide in his word and live by the truth the Spirit makes known. That justice and life, peace and prosperity, come not from the being of man's I will, standing alone in vain self-conceived splendor, but from our wise contrition before the giver of all life, in faith accorded us by him who bestows it, according to his will, through conviction of sin and recognition of divine judgment from an unceasing, irreparable fall 
inherent in each of us from the beginning of man's time here on earth. That in denial of this biblical truth of sin, the consequence being an eternal death in separation from God forever, and by revelation from God that Jesus Christ is Lord, Savior, Judge, and the just ruler of the kings of the earth, we will serve the Lord. And though the greater portion of the people of the earth walk down a different road, the road less taken, directed by the hand of the Almighty, remains before us as we continue our journey into His presence, though it may mean great loss here, of no consequence compared to what lies ahead in eternity. We are not of this world, beloved, and its systems, but we are in it to keep the faith that God receives all the glory.